more functions right so now. blood has negative blood cells negative blood cells um which uh, helps in uh, fighting you are talking about white blood cells i think okay now you are actually referring to white blood cells yeah suleiman uh, do not answer on this id answer on another id okay now yeah uh, just one minute guys am i uh, visible to everyone in the class yes sir uh, okay okay now i'm visible <clears throat> okay so we did learned about that like some of the functions as you have listed right now apart from that also there are some other functions also performed by the blood right like uh, the blood is kind of acting as a medium of transport not just for oxygen for carbon dioxide but and waste it also transports essential nutrients to each and every cell in your body right now getting it guys furthermore uh, we know that there are components in the blood as you have mentioned like there are components like white blood cells that improves your immune system helps you fight against the pathogens against the infections okay we also know that blood contains a component that helps in clotting wherever you whenever you develop a cut or you uh, have a wound or an injury so thereby a component found in the blood will coagulate it will coagulate thereby basically it will clamp all the red blood cells and develops a clot what is that component can anyone remember and tell me uh, sir what that plasma no not plasma plasma is basically the fluid uh, fluid blood found blood. in the blood no blood blood plates platelets okay uh, no mm -hmm, good actually at least you were trying good yes yes aman and abubakar how are you guys doing shreya has not joined right now okay you guys also try to answer actively participate in the discussion in the class okay and suleiman you can answer in the chat box if you have some other issue like network issue or some uh, if your mic is not working okay all right also we know that blood helps to maintain the helps to regulate the temperature of the body didn't we learn that too also yes sir right so blood would be transporting the essential substances it would be transporting the waste materials it would be transporting the nutrients in the blood furthermore blood would be maintaining the temperature of the body in the winter season we know that in the winter and in the summer season in the winter season our body needs to retain the temperature retain the energy so thereby the blood flow will be faster in in, in depths of your body in that like blood the um, flow of blood will be seen more faster inside in in um, inside the body i mean to say not close to the surface of the skin but in the summer season your body has to get rid of the heat so thereby blood will be flowing fast close to the surface of the skin thereby getting rid of the extra heat got this now okay we do, we do call blood as a connective uh, connective tissue also why do we call blood a connective tissue yes abu bakar aman sir yeah and others also turn your camera on yeah priyanka sir i'm not sure with it is it because uh, the cells are small no no not because of that there's a different reason why blood is called as a connective tissue yes you all remember this in fact we have discussed about this topic we do know about this thing that blood is kind of acting blood we know that it transports the oxygen from the lungs towards the heart right and heart will be pumping the oxygen to rest part of the body getting it guys yeah didn't we learn about that thing yes sir abu bakar read this paragraph also we did learn one more thing that the heart would be pumping the deoxygenated blood towards the lungs so the blood is kind of connecting these organs connecting the different organs connecting the different tissues in the body that's why it's called a connective tissue yeah one of you quickly read the given paragraph sir can i read yeah 
why is blood collagen connective tissue blood is considered considered as a type of con con connective tissue because it connects the body system transport transports oxygen and nutrients to the part to all parts of the body and removes the waste products got this now so that is how it is called a connective tissue because it would be connecting the body systems particularly the organs different organs would be connected via the bloods right now so one organ has to send something else to another organ for example in your body so that would be sent via the blood only now so it these are kind of the roadways in your body just like you have a road network in your city in the similar manner inside your body also there is a network of roadways that is basically the uh basically the blood vessels and in the blood vessels the blood is flowing so there by the blood will be connecting the different organs in your body particularly organs like heart and lungs would be connected by the blood okay in the previous class we were learning about different types of blood groups and rh factor we did learn about that and in fact we did learn about pulse rate also and heart rate also or heart beat right and let us continue from where we left the previous classes previous class so as you saw in this image also here you can see the heart beating a beating heart of a human being right now so here you would see that one contraction and one expansion of the heart will be called as one heart beat that will be called as one heart beat getting it okay so heartbeat in this we saw that the muscles of the heart here priyanka you have a question sir did you got my notes which i sent no i haven't got it now as of now i haven't got i haven't got it okay i will ask the team uh, regarding this okay now okay sir mm -hmm. so in the in the animation as you guys see here that heart would be expanding and relaxing it expands and then contracts so the muscles of the heart are actually relaxing and contracting continu continuously why they are doing doing it so so that they can pump the blood in the arteries so because of this rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the heart heart is able to pump the blood in the arteries and this one rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the heart was being called as heartbeat as we have learned in the previous class getting it guys so the moment when it expands and then contracts so that will be called as one heartbeat and we did learned about pulse rate also so pulse rate was defined as the number of pulse beats per minute right now the norm the number of times the uh, you would observe the rhythmic vibrations in your arteries like if if you were to place your fingers near the arteries in your hand you would be able to feel a sensation there you would be able to observe a throbbing sensation rhythmic throbbing right now so why that was happening as we have learned that as the heart would be pumping the blood into the arteries this heart is pumping the blood into the arteries so because of the continuous pumping of the blood in the arteries by the heart we will observe that there will be movement in the arteries of course of course there will be movement in the arteries right now so which you will be able to observe at cer certain locations in your body like you can observe that near your palm or you can observe it in the neck region also so that is called as pul pulse so you guys tell me the cause of pulse is what what is the cause behind the pulse why you observe a throbbing movement in your uh, in your wrist anyone what why do we see this pulse? movement yeah i'm repeating my question why do we feel a pulse why do we feel this throbbing sensation throbbing rhythmic throbbing uh, movement in our wrist what is the reason behind this so because our nerves are connected to our like heart like that speak clearly and speak a little bit louder because our nerves are kind of connected to the heart is it because of that or Hmm. Or more specifically, it is because of the pumping of the heart. No? Yeah. Getting it, right? 
so that is the reason so heart is pumping here and you can feel that pumping of the heart in in your rest also getting it now so this movement it is generated due to the heart as in the previous class i gave a very good example where i did so, told you that just like how you observe that when water water motor would be pumping the water in the pipe so you will observe some movement in the pipe so you can think of the heart as the pump right now as the pump motor and you can observe think of the arteries in your wrist as a pipe in which you are feeling the movement so do tell me this pulse will it not be giving you a reading of the heartbeat also at what rate your heart is beating yes so there will be a very close correlation between the pulse rate and the heart we did learn about pulse rate also we did learn that pulse rate would be defined as the number of pulse beats per minute number of times you will observe a throbbing movement in your wrist so in one minute you would be observing it to be around 70 to 80 beats per minute getting it guys then we did learn about heart beat also so here we did learned about but heart beat would be the speed of the heart Uh, the the heart rate talking about the heart rate it would be the speed of the heart beat getting it so heart rate would basically mean how many times the heart would be contracting and relaxing in one minute or in other ways i can say that heart rate would be simply the speed of the heart beat measured by the number of contractions of the heart per minute getting it so there is a very close relationship between the heart beat and pulse rate there is a relationship between the heart beat and pulse rate so why is this image try to understand this yes so we can also check our pulse rate on uh, sir somewhere between the forearm and sir on our neck also yeah on on the forearm or in the like over here you can observe this like in this part also you can observe getting it the artery that goes in this part of your body okay in the lower hand in the upper hand right now so there you you can also observe the pulse rate okay no but very specific reading will be taken more accurate reading will be taken once you observe uh, when you will be observing the pulse rate um in your wrist Okay, now that gives a more accurate reading. So this is the heart, right? And you know about heart rate as we have discussed this, and we know about pulse rate, right? So both of them will be sharing a very close relation that it would be almost exactly equal to the heartbeat. The pulse rate would be almost equal to your heartbeat. Getting it? What I'm trying to say. So if a person has a pulse rate of let's say 70 70 is the pulse rate 70 is the pulse rate so heart beat would also be yes. closely 70 70 beats per minute yes sir so if a person is laying down like sir he is uh, he has fainted and so if you have to check whether his pulse rate or heart hmm. rate is uh, going on so sir between the thumb so like in the second picture here sir we have to do it like mm -hmm. that or sir we can mm -hmm. put our finger on his her neck so sir we can know if the pulse rate is uh, moving or not so sir mm -hmm. if you can feel some kind of sir what can i say sir some kind of mm -hmm. some kind like of small beats Sir, on your finger, sir, you can feel it. So, mm -hmm. sir, that's sir, that's how pulse rate check. Ah, uh, that's how to check pulse rate, sir. Yeah, like like you can check the pulse rate. Like for example, uh, if a person has fainted, for example, so uh, at that time, what you can do? Either you can measure uh, uh, hold his wrist and measure his pulse rate using uh, his wrist also, or simply. in make the person in a lie down position okay and lie down that person and furthermore do one thing that we can hold we can put our finger near the wind pipe or just below the jaw of the person right now so place your index and middle fingers 
just to the side of the Adam's apple. Getting it? Just to the side of the Adam's apple. You guys know about Adam's apple? That is the voice box. Getting it? And gently press the fingers. Gently press the fingers. Right now. So oh, there no, you will be I'm able to... to put it in this uh, index finger. So that you will be able to sense the throbbing. Uh, uh, so you will be able to feel the throbbing sensation more properly. Okay, now in order to uh, do it more but accurately. If we, it, if we put it on our middle finger, would we, will, uh, we won't be able to hear it. Yeah, like in this image also, Wait, you can see. observe here. Uh, just one minute. Like in this image, this one, here we have observed that like we have placed two fingers, right? So here what happens, the area of contact increases. Kind of uh, measuring the pulse rate using two fingers, here the area increases now. So thereby, you'd be more accurately able to take the measurement. That's that's the reason. Okay, now in fact, you can take three. Uh, we can uh, take help of three fingers also, but usually by use of two fingers, we would be getting the reading. Getting it. So that is the thing. First of all, you have to make the person in a lie down position. Lie down that person thereby. Just below his jaw, like between jaw and his and uh, and his windpipe or like to the side of the Adam's apple. Place your index and middle finger, okay? And gently press it. Gently give it, give it, uh, give it a slight bit of pressing. Slightly press it and you will be able to feel the beating. Okay, now? Okay. Also, uh, make sure that you do not press too hard because you might be then blocking the flow of the blood. Okay. So that is the thing. Furthermore, a healthy pulse rate would be somewhere around 60 to 100 beats per minute. A healthy pulse rate would be around 60 to 100 beats per minute. So that is the healthy pulse rate. Getting it, guys? Yes. Sir. And if a person consist consistently have a pulse rate higher than 100, then he should get a, get a checkup. He should consult a doctor. Getting it now? Okay. Also, the pulse rate of one person uh, will vary from the another, ranging on his uh, uh, emotions, on his, uh, uh, I mean to say, on his body size or the kind of medicines he would be consuming on his uh, daily activity, his lifestyles, his age, right? Now, the amount of caffeine the person would be consuming. So, all those would be determining what the um, pulse rate of a person is going to be. Got this now? Okay, furthermore, we, we have learned that there's a close relationship between the pulse rate and the heartbeat. That is basically, both of them would be usually usually same. The pulse rate and the heartbeat would be usually same to each other. Right now. And we have learned about the heartbeat, that heartbeat is simply the contraction and relaxation of the muscles. As you can see here, this is heartbeat. That is the contraction and expansion of the heart. And each heartbeat will cause an increase in the blood pressure in the arteries. Meaning that with each contraction, as the heart would be contracting, getting it, as the heart would be contracting and expanding, that would in be increasing the blood pressure in the arteries. So after this, you'd be talking about blood pressure also. But before that, all of you have a look at this image. That is a stethoscope. So you guys know about this? Yeah. What is the use of a stethoscope? To check our an, heartbeat. Right now? So it would be an instrument to check the heartbeat, you guys are saying. Okay. But more specifically, the thing is, this stethoscope is particularly used in order to examine the physical condition of a person by listening the sounds that are generated inside the heart the lungs and your intestines as well. There's a concept or there's a field in medicine called as auscultation. Pay attention to what I'm writing over here. There's a term called as auscultation. This is a field in medicine whereby a doctor examines the internal sound that is produced inside the body of a person 
and based on the type of sound he would be hearing he would be able to determine whether a person is healthy or not of course it would be used to listen to the heartbeat of a person also but apart from that using this stethoscope you guys tell me that many times when you happen to visit a doctor unfortunately when if you were sick so you'd observe that the the doctor would be placing the the bell or this diaphragm on the back of the body also yes, apart sir. from the chest you would be placing it at the back also sometimes near your near to your abdomen also yes sir right so if it were to be only meant for measuring the heartbeat of a person why they would be placing it in in your back in the back of the body or uh, in, in near to the stomach because as i was saying that there's a field in medicine called as auscultation in which we study about the internal sounds produced inside our body right many times you would have feel this like whenever your stomach is upset your stomach would be kind of producing some sound right or whenever you are doing some intense workouts or uh, you are you have let's say you have came to home after running for some time or you have participated in a marathon or some sports activity you can actually feel uh, uh, hear the sound of the pumping of the uh, uh, sound of the beating of the heart getting it guys so thereby what would be done first of all look at the structure there are two main structure ear tips and the diaphragm the ear tips would be used to hear the sound and the diaphragm would be placed on the body this would be catching the sound vibrations okay so a stethoscope is a instrument that is used to listen to the heartbeat of a person right furthermore in order to accurately measure the heartbeat of a person it amplifies the heartbeat so that the doctor can monitor and um, monitor it more carefully amplifying here it means that amplify means to increase getting it what i'm trying to say amplify means to increase but it does not mean that it actually increases the real uh, heartbeat of a person the actual heartbeat of a person it means that like you would have heard of this term amplifier you have this amplifier in sound systems right you guys getting it fatima aman yes, priyanka sir. yeah suleiman okay so this would be kind of amplifying increasing the sound so that because the sound of the heartbeat is not that much okay na it's not that much right now so thereby it will be kind of amplifying it okay increasing the sound so that the doctor can hear the internal sound of the heart properly okay so if the structure is very simple it contains two ear pieces that would that would go into the ear a tube that would be connecting it to the diaphragm this is a very sound sensitive object that is very sound sensitive so it would be catching the vibrations okay no it would be catching the vibrations so that is the purpose of a stethoscope so apart from listening to the sound of heart it would also be helpful in listening to the sound of the stomach also getting it guys it would be useful for stomach also for the more lungs also your lungs also produces some sounds although it is not audible but the, with the help of this you can hear it okay so hope this concept was clear to everyone is it clear to everyone okay have you guys learned about the relationship between heart beat and pulse rate yes so pulse rate and heartbeat have a close relation as we have studied that it would be basically same to each other okay now there are some important facts about the human heart like every day your heart would be beating about how many times about 1 lakh times in a day your heart would be beating about 1 lakh times so one heartbeat equals to what do we mean by one heartbeat one heartbeat means one contraction and ex expansion of the heart one contraction and expansion of the heart that is called as heartbeat so observe this animation over here here you can see the heart is continu continuously expanding and contracting so one contraction and expansion is called as heartbeat and this 
the heart in a day will be doing for how many times? Yes, Fatima. Sir. For how many times your heart would be beating? Uh, Around. Sixty to hundred times. Oh, sorry. Look over uh, here, no. Sorry, sorry, hundred thousand. Hundred thousand or one lakh times. Okay. Furthermore, your your heart would be pumping about two thousand gallons of blood. Okay, almost one point five gallons of blood per minute. Okay, na. Gallon is a unit of volume. By the way, gallon is a unit of volume. Keep that in mind. Okay, na. And one gallon would be somewhere around four point five liter. Okay, na. So one gallon would be about one four point five liter of blood. So just imagine the number of uh, the, the amount of liters it would be pumping in one day. Okay, na. By the way, four point five. I was saying it was take. Uh, One gallon equals to four point five. It is taken in other countries, like in the countries like United States of America or in Britain. One gallon equals to four point five liter. By the way, in uh, India, it would be around three point seven eight um, liter. I think okay, na. So in one minute, it is pumping about one point five gallon. One gallon equals to how much? As I said moments ago, one gallon in liter is about. Three point seven eight liter. So you can multiply one point five with one with three point seven eight, and that much you will get in liter. Getting it, guys? Do one thing: multiply three point seven eight with one point five quickly, and see what answer you are getting. What's yes. Sir? Multiply Say the what? given value. Multiply three point seven eight with one point five. There you will get the value in liter. Three point seven eight. Three point seven eight with one point five. You'd be getting somewhere around five point six or five point seven okay, liters sir, of blood. Can you wait one minute? Yeah, sure. Getting it. So that is such an interesting fact that in just one minute, <laughs> about one and half gallon of blood is being pumped by the heart into the artery. Just imagine the amount. So, the circulation of blood in your body is very fast. Sir. Yeah. It's five point sixty-seven. Mm -hmm. uh, Not sixty-seven. Read as six seven. Okay, no. After decimal, it is read as read individually. So that is five point six seven liter of blood in just one minute. Got this, na, guys? So that's another interesting thing. Okay. Furthermore. The blood circulating blood would be, uh, the circulates blood through sixty thousand miles of blood vessels in your body. So in just one day, in just one day, you know the blood would have traveled about sixty thousand miles of blood vessels in your body. Getting it? By the way, you guys ever imagine about the total length of the blood vessels of the human? What could have been the total? Huh? So. When a person would have reached the age of twenty-five or twenty-six years, when they are an adult, the average length of all the blood vessels combined, uh, talking about arteries, veins, capillaries, that would make up sixty thousand miles. That is the total length. Like if we were able to take out all the arteries, veins, or capillaries from a person, and we were to stretch it, it would be stretched up to sixty thousand miles. Yeah, one of you had a question. So if we do this, and like I'm giving you example, I guess this is not possible. But mm -hmm. uh, our way, our blood vessels can go around the earth, not two or three, but like three to four mm -hmm. times. Because yeah, they can go around. Hmm hmm. For that purpose, we need to know about the circumference of the earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys know about the circumference of the earth. You guys understand now what is the circumference of the Earth, and in fact, we'd be able to move around the Earth multiple times, at least more than two times, I think. See, the circumference of the Earth is almost about forty thousand kilometer. Okay, and you know this is in miles, and you know about that one mile equals to how many kilometer? One point six kilometer. So you can convert this from mile into kilometer. So you'd be getting. 
9 to 6. 96,000 kilometer. Getting it now, 60,000 miles in kilometer would be about 96,000 kilometer. How I did it? Because we know that one mile equals to 1.6 kilometer. And the circumference of the earth. Yes, yeah, Suleiman, you have found it out. 5.55 you're getting. Okay, you found a different value, by the way. Uh, that, okay, different thing. Sorry. So what are we saying that the circumference of the earth, the basically the circumference of the earth, this whole distance is about 40,000 kilometer. So we'd be able to move around the earth more than two times. But this is a very good, um, uh, Fatima. So that is another interesting fact as we have discussed. Okay. Furthermore, we are going to learn about the blood pressure. Okay, so let us learn about, learn about blood pressure and how it is measured. So talking about the blood pressure, blood pressure is basically, it's the measure of how forcefully the blood is moving through the blood vessels, particularly through the arteries. It's the measure of how forcefully blood is moving through your blood vessels, particularly arteries. And this can be measured using a, a device called a sphygmomanometer. Earlier, we had a device called a sphygmomanometer. By the way, nowadays, it has been replaced with the modern blood monitors. Okay, now, uh, let me just show you an image of a sphygmomanometer that was earlier used to measure this. You guys have seen what is a sphygmomanometer? Have you seen images of this device I'm talking about? Yes? <clears throat> okay. This is the device I'm actually talking about. Hopefully, I will be able to get it. Yeah, the first, very first image. This one. Okay, yes, now. So earlier this was used. Okay, now. In some old clinics, we can still find it out to be in yes, use sir. right now. But nowadays, it has been replaced with blood pressure monitor. I suppose all of you would be having this this device at home. If not, make sure that you keep it at home. It is a very yes. useful device. Good. <clears throat> so talking about blood pressure, as I said, it's the force that is exerted by the by the blood against the walls of the arteries. Okay. Now here we have one another definition for it. Although it's talk it's talking about the same thing. Moments ago, what I said that blood pressure is the measure of how forcefully the heart is pumping the blood. How forcefully the heart would be pumping the blood into the um, blood vessels, right? Sometimes the force can increase. Sometimes it can decrease depending upon different conditions. Okay. Now. Another way to look at blood pressure is that as your heart is pumping the blood, think of this as heart and it is pumping the blood into the blood vessels. So as the blood would be moving into the blood vessels, particularly here, we are talking about artery because the blood pumps blood into the uh, heart pumps the blood into arteries, basically. So as the blood would be pumped into this, the blood would be exerting pressure on the walls of the arteries also. No, isn't it? Yes. Just like, for example, taking the same example previously, as water moves through a pipe, you can feel that the pipe would be showing some movement. Why? Because the water is pushing against or it is exerting pressure on the walls of the pipe. As you have a pipe, uh, as you have a uh, pipe and water is flowing in this with some pressure. And if you were to hold this pipe, you hold this pipe. So will you not observe, will you not feel some uh, movement in this pipe? You will feel it to be vibrating. Why is it so? Because the water molecules are exerting pressure on the walls of the pipe. Hopefully you guys are getting it. What I'm trying to say. Yes. Can okay, I, in the same manner, the blood would be exerting pressure on the walls of the blood vessels, particularly artery. Okay. That is what the blood pressure is. And another way we talk about blood pressure is the amount of force with which the blood is, the heart is pumping blood. It's the measure of how forcefully your heart is pumping the blood into the blood vessels. 
and that can be early it was measured using a device called as a spike manometer manometer now it is we have a blood monitor like this one which is a digital device okay how one has to take a blood pressure like if you want to take a blood pressure using a spike manometer for, for example like this one so first of all you would be made to sit comfortably in a chair and you should support your back with something at least for some 5 or 6 minutes make sure that you have supported your back like the the way i am sitting here my back is supported with the chair okay now furthermore keep your feet and your hands flat okay now keep your feet flat on the ground or if there's a table near you keep your hands on the table roll up your sleeves right and your sleeves should be rolled up and furthermore you will observe that the image is not complete but there would be a strap there would be a strap that would be placed on your upper arm okay na the strap would be tightly um, put over your upper arm furthermore this structure that you see over here that is called as cuff this cuff is kind of inflated and deflated it is kind of um kind of squeezed and then released getting it now furthermore you would have also observed that while taking the blood pressure using a spike manometer the doctor would also be placing this stethoscope have you observed that while taking the measurement of blood pressure the doctor simultaneously at the same time he would be placing this diaphragm on uh, under that strap also huh i guess so you guys haven't been to that kind of a doctor who would be doing so but generally many times the that the doctor would be using the stethoscope at the same time while he would be taking the blood pressure doing so he would be able to measure both the things he would be able to measure the blood pressure and the heartbeat also okay right now so that is the thing so furthermore why they would be kind of compressing this cuff and then releasing it because they have to increase the pressure the strap that is placed on your hand that there is runs a tube in which the air is being air is being uh, kind of compressed in this so that would increase the pressure on on your arms so thereby in that manner they would be able to take the reading okay hope you guys have understood this how basically it is used do one thing aman you read this this given paragraph ye yes, saman read the given paragraph yes sir hmm. blood pressure is the force exerted exerted by blood against the wall of the arteries as the heart pumps it through the circulatory system measured in millimeters form of mercury good <clears throat> and normal blood pressure is a um, um hg it is typically expressed as set pressure during heart beats over the systolic shift between heart beats normal blood pressure is around 1 to 8 hg high blood pressure hypertension can strain the arteries and lead on managing blood pressure through lifestyle changes and if necessary medication are crucial for cardi cardiovascular health you are not audible so i can hear you so so i can't hear you
Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, I have to be made host of the meeting. Then I will be able to share the screen. Uh, give me a minute. Let me make a quick call. Okay, we were talking talking about systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. So, in generally, whenever a person we would be measuring the blood pressure, two values are recorded. Right now, you would have seen like it would be about one twenty slash eighty. Sometimes the reading could go up to one forty. Uh, then the lower value would be seventy, or could be ninety, or could hundred, could be hundred. So, what are these two upper values and? why uh, why we have got two different values you should be thinking of this like why we are having two different values right so systolic pressure talking about the systolic pressure first of all it's the pressure exerted when blood is ejected into the arteries meaning when the heart has contracted when the heart has contracted so thereby at that time the blood would be pumped in the artery it's the it's a top number and it like it's the top number 120 and it refers to the amount of pressure that would be experienced in the arteries while the heart would be beating talking about diastolic blood pressure it's the bottom number it's the bottom number and thereby it refers to the amount of pressure in the artery in the in the arteries while the heart is resting in between between the between heartbeats have a look at this animation. That concept will be quickly clear. Okay. See, you can tell me that how the blood will be pumped in, into the artery. When the heart would be contracting or when the heart would be relaxing? So both. Both is, okay. It is, it is due to continuous movement of both, both the actions, but particularly like for example i have to squeeze out the water from from this water bottle so should i leave it at a state of rest or should i compress it sir hmm. rest it no no you didn't uh, heard my question properly say i have a water bottle in my hand for example i need to squeeze the water out of it out of it for example so thereby i have to compress it now it needs to be contracted uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Hmm. So it has to be contracted. So while your heart would be contracting, so at that time, blood with some pressure, it will go into the arteries. So arteries would be experiencing some pressure. So that will be called as systolic pressure. When the heart contracts, when the blood would be pumped into it, when the blood would be pumped into the artery. That would be called as systolic pressure when the heart has just pumped the blood. Right. After having pumping the pumped the blood, the heart will rest for just a fraction of second. For just a very tiny fraction of second, your heart would be resting. What I mean to say that due to contraction, this arrow shows that blood is moving into the artery. So due to contraction, the blood moves into the artery. Okay. And due to relaxation, relaxation or basically um, we can say expansion or relax relaxation. So when it would be expanding, the heart is in a state of rest and thereby there is a no pumping of blood taking place at that time. No blood is being pumped at that time into the artery. So far, it is clear to everyone or not, please let me know. It is very important to understand the whole concept. Sir, only the last part. Can you explain it? The last mm -hmm. part. Okay, okay. Sir, can you, can you like explain it more, like very clearly because I don't understand. Okay, okay, sure. See, 
first of all as you can see in this animation the heart is kind of contracting it is kind of squeezing right and we know whenever you squeeze something whatever like the example of this water bottle as you squeeze it the water will come out of it okay so thereby due to squeezing or due to contracting of the heart the blood will come out of the heart and it will go into the artery okay after that the heart will expand so it will kind of rest for a very tiny fraction of second very for a very small amount of time okay now for very small amount of time right now so at that time there is no pumping taking place into the artery okay clear fatima aman priyanka yes. abubakar suleiman then again the heart will be contracting sir um are you trying to say uh, if the congestion uh, uh, the blood will go inside arteries um the heart will expand expand hmm. for few minutes not for minutes no minute would be a very uh, yeah for just a fraction of second okay, okay no mm -hmm. then again the heart would be contracting it would be contracting and the blood would be pumped into the artery it will again go into the artery then again it will relax for just a very tiny fraction of second then it will again expand so it's a rhythmic process contraction expansion contraction expansion that keeps on going on okay so what happens what i'm saying that it's not like the flow of arteries the flow of blood in the arteries it is going to stop while the heart would be expand a high a heart would be resting that does not happen the flow of blood is continuous okay now why because the amount of time for which your heart would be resting it is so small that is it is almost insignificant it is almost negligible getting at what i'm trying to say okay everyone getting it so the yes, pressure sir. the pressure in at which the blood would be pumped while the heart would be contracting that pressure would be called as systolic pressure that's the upper limit that's the systolic pressure is this concept clear so far and the pressure at which the blood would be flowing while the heart would be resting that will be called as diastolic pressure that is called as diastolic pressure Suleiman Abu Bakr Priyanka Aman Mustafa everyone Suleiman So sir Fatima. this process is called What this process is called as No like Mhm mm sir So this is basically the we are right now talking about blood pressure and we did learn that blood pressure has got two numbers in it it is made up of two kind of pressures right now basically the upper pressure and the lower pressure systolic pressure as i say that it's the it would be the maximum pressure in the arteries so when the arteries would be experiencing the maximum pressure when the heart would be contracting and then pumping the blood into it while when your heart is relaxing in between two heart beats your heart is relaxing now as i have said here as i have written here also between two contractions your heart is resting for just a very tiny fraction of second huh? so usually at that time the it's not like the flow of blood will not take place in the arteries still the blood is going to flow but at that time since the arteries are not experiencing a pressure from the heart sufficient amount of pressure from the heart so thereby the pressure of flow of blood in the artery would be comparatively lower it would be comparatively less everyone honestly tell me have you guys understood this concept of systolic and diastolic or not if not please let me know yes sir okay everyone others also please let me know in the chat box or in the class sir it's a bit confusing it's confusing a little bit confusing yeah okay okay see <clears throat> let's keep it simple a basic thing is that your heart does two kind of movement your heart does two kind of movement one is 
contraction another one is relaxation okay what happens whenever you contract something like for example you have a water bottle you contract this and if the water bottle is filled with blood for example the blood will come out of that bottle right yes sir getting it so think of that as the systolic blood pressure the pressure at which the blood would be coming out of it while you are squeezing it you are contracting it that would be let us say that would be called as systolic blood pressure okay getting it yes okay and as we have learned that the heart does two kind of movement contraction and it relaxes also okay no so it relaxes also okay also uh, think of it in that manner like the blood has got the water bottle has holes in the bottom also it has got holes in it in its base also so if i were to squeeze it squeeze this like normally also the blood will be uh, the blood will be coming out from the bottom of this bottle for example normally also it is going to come out from this now if there's a hole at the base right so that would yes, also sir. be coming at some pressure so think of that as diastolic blood pressure but if i were to squeeze it the blood from the holes let us say that there are holes in the bottle so the blood from the holes when i squeeze this bottle it would be coming at much pressure but if i were to relax it if it is at a, a, a state of rest right now if it is relaxed thereby the blood will be coming out of the holes at normal pressure at lower pressure hope this example should be sufficient to understand the concept yeah fatima and others fatima read the given two paragraphs quickly systolic blood pressure pressure ex exerted when blood is injected into arteries normal systolic blood pressure is 120 m m m hg or below diastolic blood pressure pressure uh, blood arteries exerts within arteries between heartbeats normal diastolic blood pressure is uh, 80 mm hg or below hmm. okay it's millimeter mercury okay no mm for millimeter hg for mercury okay so if a person has a blood pressure of 120 systolic and 80 diastolic so thereby his blood pressure is normal right if it increases above 120 or 80 so thereby he has a high blood pressure if it is below it thereby he has a low blood pressure hope you guys have understood this concept okay now next we would be going to learn about a pulmonary circuit okay so just like we have a electrical circuit in our house where the electricity would be flowing through different appliances right it would be passing through refrigerators from electrical bulbs right two different components two different electrical components in the house similar to that we have a kind of circuit in our body also in which the blood would be flowing from the heart to the different parts of the body and to the lungs also so there by have a look at this image in fact we did saw this image previously as well here what we see that the heart would be pumping the impure blood to different parts uh, it would be pumping the pure blood to different parts of the body so the one that is in red color you can see that that is having a high concentration of oxygen and a very low concentration of carbon dioxide gas so the heart is pumping the blood via the artery towards the body and in our body basically talking about the different cells of the body the cells of the body when they would have done respiration they would be releasing the waste materials into the blood so the another kind of blood vessel called as veins would be carrying out the impure blood towards the heart and then now the heart since the impurities in the blood needs to be removed so the heart would be now pumping that impure blood particularly the blood would be containing high concentration of carbon dioxide so the heart would be pumping that impure blood towards the lungs where the gaseous exchange will take place 
so that's a kind of circuit no lungs hearts and the heart and the whole human body it is being connected via this network of blood vessels so that is called as pulmonary circuit it's a network of arteries and veins that would be connecting the hearts and lungs the oxygenated blood is pumped from the blood to the lungs for oxygenation the deoxygenated blood would be sent to the lungs right where lungs would filter out carbon dioxide from it and then fill the blood with oxygen gas so there the deoxygenated blood would be reoxygenated it would be oxygenated getting it all of you